All right, so I want to preface this whole discussion with this. I love Monster Hunter World, and it's because of that love that I want to explore the, the dissonance between the in-universe lore and the actual gameplay loop. So Monster Hunter is about exactly what you'd expect, hunting giant monsters. And now, as you can imagine, that has led to some criticism from various different groups. But the straight criticism of the game as somehow espousing violence against animals, in this case the behemoth monsters of World or any number of other titles in the franchise, would appear to fall on his face when you look at the actual narrative of the Monster Hunter franchise. Your hunter, as part of World's campaign, is tasked with helping cull what essentially amount to invasive species from various local ecosystems, in what is essentially a much more high fantasy version of when states or counties allow people to thin out deer populations to make sure they don't eat too much of the local resources and destabilize the whole region. Here's what the wiki has to say. The primary goal of the Hunter's Guild is to further prevent damage to the monster populations. This is so they can prevent other monster species from going extinct like in some ancient species. Due to this, the Hunter's Guild keeps tabs on the monster populations in areas and prevents hunters from taking the same quest more than once, unless it is necessary to do so. However, if a monster threatens lives, towns, cities, etc., then hunters are allowed to hunt it to prevent destruction, even if the monster is rare, so long as that monster is at least repelled or slain. So while on its face, this explanation of the gameplay paints Monster Hunter's Research Commission as benevolent environmentalists, the gameplay loop and character progression are what actually end up contradicting that idea, somewhat profoundly, too, I might add. Now, there are various ways you can go about hunting the monsters in the New World. Expeditions and quests, the latter of which are further classified into five categories. Now, expeditions operate differently than your posted quests, giving you the option to head out into the wild without a specific objective or monster to hunt. So the issue here comes not so much from any of the quests themselves, but from Monster Hunter's upgrade system. You don't have any abilities in Monster Hunter, just weapons and armor. Armor can be forged in predetermined sets, and weapons can be crafted and upgraded via each armament's specific tree. The fly in the ointment is that, for whatever conservationist philosophy is publicly espoused by the Research Commission, the upgrade system dramatically contradicts it. Each armor set in the game is associated with a specific creature, and you won't know the specific perks or look of that set until you kill its creature. Additionally, each individual piece of armor and each weapon is crafted by obtaining specific monster materials, and the monster you're hunting may not drop all those ingredients you need to craft a certain weapon or piece of armor the first time you kill it. More than likely, you'll need to hunt that creature multiple times in order to collect all the little bits of flesh and bone that you'll need to craft your new weapons of war. Now, for example, there was a point where the Research Commission sends you out to take care of some Rathalos that are bothering the local fauna. These Rathalos come in two varieties, Azure and Original Flavor, and their skin, bones, and organs can be used to craft a variety of tools in your arsenal. I had my eyes on an upgraded longsword that I knew involved some bits from both these Rathalos, but when I finally tracked them down and killed them, I wasn't able to harvest all the parts that I needed. But even two hunts of a given creature will probably be insufficient to craft any one creature's particular armor set, which requires the creation of five separate armor pieces, each with their own list of ingredients. And if you want to round out your armory, you'll need to go on innumerable hunts of the same creature. Now, is all this to say that the team making Monster Hunter endorse poaching? Well, literally speaking, no, since poaching is usually defined explicitly as the illegal hunting of animals, specifically those that are endangered or protected. And there's no indication that anything in the New World is endangered or protected, but that's neither here nor there. More generally, I think the argument could be made that Monster Hunter endorses big game or trophy hunting, but while you could argue that trophy hunting is gross or irresponsible in the real world, I don't necessarily think that this dichotomy between the lore of Monster Hunter and the core gameplay loop is irresponsible as, say, allowing the use of white phosphorus as a killstreak reward in modern warfare. But that's not to say I don't think we should ever critically think about these types of things. I don't think any kid who plays Monster Hunter is going to go out and hack apart 30 to 50 wild boars and craft their pelts into a suit and their ribs into daggers, just like I don't think Fortnite is going to turn kids into school shooters. And maybe the team at Capcom actually realized this dichotomy existed, because for whatever issues arise from the upgrade system in Monster Hunter World, you can actually play the game without ever doing any of this extracurricular hunting. You can mine ore deposits from all over the New World to make metal armors, and you can recover the bones of long-dead creatures to craft new weapons and gear. 
Now, theoretically, you could even craft some of the more involved creature-based items if you're extremely patient. As you wander through the new world, you may stumble upon two monsters already in the midst of battle with one another. And sometimes when these monsters fight each other, some bit of one of the combatants may come loose. And if you collected enough of these loose monster fragments, you could use them to craft a new wardrobe or weapons for yourself without ever raising a hand against the majestic creatures of the new world. There's also the tangential issue one could bring up, that Monster Hunter World engages in historically colonialist practices in the New World. Now going back to the wiki entry about the Hunter's Guild, specifically the passage, if a monster threatens lives, towns, cities, etc., then hunters are allowed to hunt it to prevent destruction, sounds an awful lot like how myriad Western colonies treated the native populations of the lands they conquered. Now I don't know enough about the history of Japan to say whether or not this is a definite criticism of their culture, but it could definitely be a criticism of the United States, especially in the naming of world's gameplay location, the New World. So what would I do about fixing this endorsement of big game hunting? Well, I, I don't really know, because I understand why it exists. Monster Hunter is, at its core, a video game. And without these more grindy aspects of weapon upgrading and armor creation, there's no real gameplay loop. And without a loop, there's no real reason to return to the game once you finish the main story. It's just one of those things that requires a slight suspension of disbelief or an immersion-breaking understanding of the game you're playing. But that doesn't mean that developers shouldn't consider the implicit messages of their game. Video games are an important and influential art form. And much like the old adage, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, we each take away from a given work what we want to take away from it. The creator's original meaning almost ends up being secondary to the viewer's or the player's own interpretation. But all this to say, this is just some thoughts on the game, a game that I really enjoy, and a game that I will be playing more of. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.